Hey everyone, Jessica here, and I want to talk about um, the thread brushes and some possible refinements you might want to do, perhaps, perhaps not, um, if you're using the brush at a really large size. So here um, I have a little composition that I've made, and I've got a size that's five inches by five inches. And this is a pretty, you know, kind of a typical, I would say, size that you would be working in, or maybe 10 by 10 or whatever. But um, the good thing is, is, you know, you, you can always actually, um, if you're making like an eight by 10, you can design it in four by five and it will be fine. But um, I'm working here on a five by five, so a pretty typical artboard. And most of the time when I'm using my brushes, I use them at about 0.5 point. And this is a pretty typical sort of size, I would say, to use them at. But if you put them in full one point, um, like I've got up here, if you actually, if you zoom in, you might notice if you have a sharp eye for detail, the faintest, faintest little bit of a, a seam in between the, the stitches. And this is something that's like literally as good as I can get these things. Um, it's just inevitable. This is just uh, Illustrator brush technology. It's amazing. And it's like, you know, 99% amazing. But you know, there's like a little bit that won't go away. That's just like a fact of life of making these Illustrator brushes. And for the most part, you're not going to notice it. You're not going to notice it, first of all, when it's printed. Um, it's way too small to make a, a notice, you know, to be noticed when it's printed. And also most of the time you're not going to be using like a one point stitch. I mean, you can use, I'd say the average one is like 0.5 at, at a typical, you know, normal kind of size artboard. But I made the stitches really big so that in case you wanted to make it big, you can have it big. But as you can see here, there, this is a, you know, little, little um, design that I've done and it's not really noticeable, but I'm going to show you one little trick that you can do in case you're doing something and you're want, you know, you want the, the stitch, the thread to be really big on your design, you know, like very magnified or something like you see here. So what you can do is you can go to file export and export as whatever you like. You can export it as a JPEG Photoshop. I'm just going to use my artboard here so it crops it and export it as a ping. It's fine. 300 DPI ping is a good quality. And let's just export that to my desktop here. And so now I can just open this in Photoshop. And now that I have this opened in Photoshop, you know, everything looks good. And honestly, like if I was going to print this, you won't see like any divisions in a typical, you know, you won't notice this at all in your typical stuff. But like if you go here to the big one, you notice a lot less when it's exported. But if you know there's any little um, threads that you want to refine like this, then go to your spot healing tool and just go like that. And you can get rid of that very faint thing in case you're feeling like having a, a really big stitch on your page. So if you've got that eye there, you can just get rid of that and then you're fine. So that's just a little tip. And usually I would just wait till you're all finished, export it as a flattened file very easily, and then use that just to refine it in Photoshop. Already like this, I love the drop shadows in Illustrator and for the most part, I don't really feel the need anymore to take it, you know, take it layer by layer in a Photoshop. I think Illustrator does an amazing job. But if you want to refine it at the end like this and just touch up any little seams that you could see, this is how you do it. So if you have any questions, just let me know. And hopefully you guys are having a lot of fun with the stitch brushes.